Hi, I'm Dominic and this video is part of Get Woodworking Week 2016 put on by Tom Iovino and Scott Morton and I hope I didn't butcher their names too much. The idea of Get Woodworking Week is to, well, to, to get people to do woodworking, either to get you to get out into your shop or to set up shop or just do something on the kitchen table. I myself have been trying to improve my woodworking for quite a while now and that usually includes dabbling with dark arts, which doesn't have the desired effects, I warn you. Two years ago I was haunted by a 2x4. <coughs> then there were the brain parasites and the strange occurrences when mowing the lawn. And, well, it all kind of culminated last year in the visit by a demon that tried to scam me out of my AdSense earnings. Really? No. I still have to meet my quota for this month. And the promising ones are already gone. So, yeah, and then there's, well, that today there's this. I, I just woke up with this, this, this cr craving and... I don't want to do wood carving at some point, but I have this wood craving, this... Oh, I need... So, sorry, I... I need to make tea light holders! Lucky for you, I managed to challenge this urge into a very educational experience, I hope, for you. Because I'm trying to make tea light holders, although they probably won't be as decorative as some of my other work, on as many different tools as possible. Enjoy! The drill press! Actually, the drill press offers two methods here, with the first being undoubtedly the quickest and most boring, literally. The tea light sized Fosner bit. The drill press again! There's no need for a big Fosner bit though, because you can use a small bread point bit too. The idea is to make as many holes around the circumference as possible, then remove the material between them with angled freehand drill mill operations. Just make sure you don't break the bit. The jigsaw! Using my Bates vise to keep it flush with the bench to provide ample surface for the tool, the jigsaw does what it does best. Quick cuts at the expense of a superb surface finish. But with the time it saves you, you could probably handle a little sanding if you wanted to. Oh, and it needs a starting hole, unless you can plunge the blade inside the dimensions of a tea light. The scroll saw! It too needs a starting hole. And the wood I used was a little taxing for mine and I managed to break a blade. Also, the resulting off-cut was a little hard to get out due to the blade wandering and producing a stubborn multi-axis cone thingy that I could not have made more complex if I had tried. The table saw! As a versatile tool, this also gets two uses, and the first makes use of a sled, which is the safer way to go but could also be employed on the mitre saw with loads of care. It also requires for the blank to be cut in half, but the table saw made short work of that off camera. The fret saw! Not really known as the scroll saw that went off the grid, this tool is also struggling with the thickness of the wood, but it allows you to guide the plate better and thus avoid the offcut getting stuck. And yes, it needed a hole to get the cut started too. The compass saw! Again with the starting hole, the problem here is the tight radius, so that you have to eat away material until the pointy end has enough room to turn. And the table saw again! This time using a fancy cove jig, which could be substituted with two slats clamped to the table in the right position, 
which I tried to determine by eye and error. In fact, one sled would suffice if you are as brave as Matthias Wandel. The router! I have again mounted the plank in my Bates style bench wise flush with the top. Using the router freehand is not as hard as it might seem since it's a rather heavy tool and does not move easily. And is thus easier to guide than say a rotary tool. Since the depth of my router was not enough, I flipped the piece and finished the through hole, although with little of the precision that you would have been surprised to see me use. The hot glue gun! An unexpected contestant and it takes advantage of the fact that no one ever laid down any rules that the tea light hole has to be made by removing wood. This actually used to be an off cut from the board that yielded the other blanks. The lathe! Yes, you could use a Forstner or spade bit if you have the appropriate chuck for the tailstock. But where would be the fun in that? And yes, I'm using a carbide blade hollowing tool for this, but the traditional tools would work as well. The router table! Actually, I'm using a pin router attachment I made a while back for a router table sled which did not work out as well as I had hoped. The idea is to have a point or a tip to reference the position of the router bit on the underside of the workpiece. It works, but a pin the size of the bit would have made it easier to guide. And if you do not have a router table, a router in a large enough wise would do the trick too. The bandsaw! No starting hole in the world would do you any good on the bandsaw unless you pull it John Heiss and weld it together after threading it through. So you have to cut the piece in two anyway and doing it with what looks like a tangential cut gives you a better result than going for two halves. And finally, the rasp! Yes, you heard right. And it is easily possible to create a hole of tea light size with this tool. I would not want to do it with a file unless you are into hardcore sand training. But it was actually surprising how well it worked out. And yes, the Rasp 2 needs a starting hole. <sighs> That's better. I hope you enjoyed this video and found what I channeled my edges into useful. If you can t take just one thing away from this, then I call it a success. Also I know that these tea light holders aren't actually decorative tea light holders, they're more a, a method rather than a finished product. A method how to get the tea light hole into a tea light holder that you might contemplate working on, that you might have the urge to work on. As long as you have the urge to do some woodworking now, to get out into your shops, to get a shop, whatever, then I'm happy. Also check out the other content that was produced or, or is still being produced for Get Woodworking Week 2016. There will be links down in the description for you to check out. And as always, if you get inspired by this and if you make something, please share it with me so I can share it on. And just in case you're new to this channel, please take the time to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it and you will hopefully appreciate being notified of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and remember to be inspired. <sighs> Glad that that is over. I hope my shop is free of evil from now on.
Mist.